hopefully that by by this word it will will empower you because that's why we're here world worship revival center is here to empower you to empower you into what you want to whatever the lord is putting in your heart to accomplish amen okay so it says here enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling do not spare lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes for you shall expand to the right and to the left and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate city inhab inhabited do not fear for you will not be ashamed neither neither sorry neither be disgraced for you will be able to put not to be put to shame for you will be forget the same as your youth and you will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore and so I was, I was meditating on this word, and I was like saying, okay, Lord, there's something here you want to say. Now, we know that this is the time of the Old Testament, Israel, and the Lord was speaking to Israel how, you know, there are small, the small people, and how he was just telling them how great they were going to be. And I just believe that that word is for us to do as individual and corporally to say, you know, how even though you're small, you may look that you're small, but you're big because you have a big God. And so when I was looking at this word, I was saying, enlarge the place of your tent. So, and so I, I really feel the Lord is saying, you know, enlarge the way you think. Think big. And many times we don't think big. Because remember when we talked about the poverty mentality, which is a set mind of this is it, and this is all I know what to do. But God wants to enlarge our tents. He wants to enlarge our brain. <laughs> he wants to enlarge our mind, a way of thinking. And for that to happen, we need, there's three things that we're going to talk about. So I'm going to get there. So he wants us, and it says, stretch out, extend, think differently. He wants us to think differently. And many times we've been for years thinking in these patterns that we have created. Maybe, remember I talked about how many times our patterns and our, um, cycle in life we have created that because that's the the atmosphere or the environment that we grew up in so if i grew up in an environment of negativity in my home that's what i created and that's what i'm going to recreate again if we don't stop it you know the word says that every plant that my heavenly father did not plant must be uprooted and sometimes there's been things that the enemy has planted in our lives lies and deception and 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 those plants are giving fruit and so i really believe that where there's a fruit there's got to be a root cause and nothing comes without a cause there's always something that happens in our lives that there's a cause and we tend to look at the fruit and so many times that fruit keeps reproducing so we sometimes don't think about how generational generationally how we are affecting not only our lives but what's to come in our children and our grandchildren. So when we think about us or now, we don't have to think, well, you know, that's okay, I'll deal with it. If you don't deal with it, your children will have to deal with it and your grandchildren will have to deal with it. And so that's something so true and profound. I was, uh, I normally don't watch this program, but I watch it just out of curiosity because I like to, I'm a type of, I like to analyze people's behaviors. <laughs> And I just kind of put it in and, and I start discerning, well, now I know why she's doing this. And I just start playing out. And uh, there's this, this, this show about young teens that are, get pregnant at the age of 16. And uh, there's one particular uh, girl, 16, she got pregnant. And, but the thing is, is what is so profound that the grandmother got pregnant at 16 out of wedlock. The mother got pregnant at 16 out of wedlock, and now she's doing the same thing. It's the same pattern. And if they don't know the Lord, that pattern for that child, guess what's going to happen? It's going to be the same pattern because there's a, a plant there that the enemy planted and has not been uprooted. And so the same thing, the grandmother did never marry the father of her child and end up leaving her. The daughter, same thing. And this girl is ending up with the same problem. So you can see the pattern of its bitter root judgments, probably a lot of judgments that were set up, and it's just setting them not up for failure. And so there's a lot of things that we are reaping and reaping and where we need to uproot those things, you know. And so I think it, I just found it very interesting how that, like that many cases 
you know, in our lives can be many things that where there's repetitive things happening in our lives. And now our children are the ones that are harvesting it as well. And then again, it gets planted and it just nonstop, nonstop. So we want to cut it up from the root. Amen? From the root. And it has to be uprooted. Otherwise, we're just repeating the same story. And we want blessings. Amen? That's what we want our children and our grandchildren to reap is the blessing. But today is the day to make a decision how we're going to do that. So if there's stuff in our lives, there are patterns in our lives that are constantly being reproduced, we need to uproot something in our lives so our children and our grandchildren can be free from that. Amen? Okay, so it says, I like when it says, you know, uh, spare not. And it, spare not is do not hold back. Many times we've been held back. We are contained by the mindset, the way we think. And so God wants to expand that. He wants to break through those areas in our lives so that we are not doing the same thing over and over again. And so uh, we don't want to be contained. Amen? That's so important. We don't want to. So in other words, it says lengthen your cords, lengthen your vision. How is your vision? How do you visualize yourself? How do you see yourself? You know, it's so important how you visualize yourself and where you're going. Because then I say, well, you know, that's it. You know, I'm done. Who cares? You know, life is life. And I'll just, you know, wait and see what happens. You know, it's like that song, Kisera, Kisera, whatever will be, will be. You know, only the future will know. No, there is a future. There's a good future. There's an awesome future that God has for us. doesn't matter what age you are. You know, Moses was used at 80, and he was in his prime. So it's never too late. They say the new 80 is the new 50, the new 50, the new 80, the 80 is the new 55 or something like that. That sounds awesome. You know, that means I'm 20. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyways. So I think it's awesome to be really know that, you know, it doesn't matter our age. It doesn't matter where we're at. He wants us to have vision, his vision, how he visualizes us, you know. And it says strengthen your stakes, which in other words, your foundation. How is your foundation? Is your foundation well? Is it strong? Is it steady? Can you build on that foundation? And that's so important to know because, when you build a home, if the foundation is cracked, you won't be able to build a home on that. They would have to redig it and restore it. Like Ross, you know all that stuff about foundations and stuff. So it's so important to understand, you know, the foundation. What is your foundation? You know, it's so important that we know who is our foundation, which is the Lord. He is our rock. Amen. Okay, so uh, we all know that uh, we're starting the uh, Rosh Hashanah New Year that's coming up. The year and uh, it's exciting because I've been reading a lot about it and been researching and um, and I was asking the Lord what is he what is he saying like what do we need to do because a lot of people don't kind of follow these uh, festivities or these um, Jewish um, festivals and stuff but I think it's important because God I think he wants us to understand that it's something very significant what we're walking in and um, I think I'm more excited about the Jewish calendar than our normal calendar that we do the New Year Gregorian is it the Gregorian calendar? I think it's more exciting the Jewish because there's some meaning, there's fruit to it. There's a there's a meaning to everything that when we position ourselves, we will see we will see the changes and the glory of the Lord. Amen. So one of the things I was just asking the Lord, there was three things for us to enter in into the new. Remember, I told you that we cannot, in order to grasp the new. We need to let go of the past. We need to let go of the old things. You know, we cannot put new wine in new wineskins. You know, it, 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 I mean, sorry, we cannot put new wine in old wineskins, right? We have to put it in new because otherwise it will leak, right? And we cannot be leaking. And just like a foundation, it cannot be leaking or anything because if water comes, then water goes through and then your house comes down. So we need a good foundation. So there's three things the Lord showed me. Um, uh, one is we need priority, preparation, and position. Okay? Those are three things that we need to understand. I said these are the three Ps, which is preparation for me is purification and consecration. So we're, we're surrendering our lives to him and preparing ourselves, aligning ourselves to him and what he wants to do in our lives in order to enter into the new. And so there's, 
It says one of the things that we need to understand is what is defiling us. Is there things in our lives that are holding, up, holding us back that are defiling us, that's bringing contamination or whatever sort of thing that the Lord wants to uproot from us? Is there bitterness? Is there unforgiveness? Is there all those things in our lives that need to be uprooted so that we could um, walk into the new? I cannot come into the new when I have bitterness of the past, all those things, the, the regret. How many times we fall you know, into the regrets, and I wish I could have done that. I wish I have done that. We cannot embrace the new if we're constantly re in regret, if we're constantly bitter, if we're always uh, in so our self pityness and all those things that come with it and that package that the enemy likes to you know, bombard us with. You know, we need to settle things with the Lord. And so I think that preparation is about coming, you know, letting all that bitterness, all that wrath, all that anger, all those issues coming to the Lord. And, you know, it's like I was saying last week, we need to come to that aha moment. We all need to have that moment of the aha moment to say, oh, you know, what is it that I need to give you, Lord? You know, and allow him to show you where you're at. Where's your heart? You know? Where are you at? Where is your heart? And where are you going? And to, is that confrontative way of saying, you know, you cannot continue the way you are, you know. And it's just surrendering to him and really asking him to come and to um, bring completeness in, in us. You know, one of, one of the verses in the, um, first, uh, uh, in the sense, oh, I can't even say this word, Tennessolonians, I was going to say in Spanish, um, says, now, May the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, he wants us, our soul, body, and spirit. And so I think that's the aha moment. How is your soul, body, and spirit? Is, how is it before the Lord, you know? How are we walking in the Lord? So that's why it's so important to be uh, accountable. To the Lord and asking the Lord to uproot anything that He needs to uproot, you know, because He's coming for a church that is without spot or wrinkle. Amen. You know, I remember when I was reading the wrinkle, my grandfather used to say, Why don't you come and iron my wrinkles? You know, because he had a lot of wrinkles all over here. And I would just play with my fake iron, I would wrinkle his, and I just remind me, Well, that's what the Lord wants to do, He wants to iron out your wrinkles, <laughs> He wants to iron out those wrinkles that have been there of bitterness, of shame, you know, of regret, of all those things that he wants us, he wants to cleanse us, amen? He wants to position us into his glory. And so the next one is position. And, you know, position is key. And this is the one I really, I really want to talk about is position is your identity. This is where are you seated? And so what seat are you seated? You know, and the Bible talks about that we are seated in heavenly places with him, amen? We know that. We say it. We declare it. We know it. But do we know it here in our heart? Because if I am seated with him, I have to operate in the way, the way he operates. So if I'm seated in the other seat, which is the enemy, it's defeat. But if I'm seated with him, it's victory. And so sometimes we don't know where we're seated because we lack of identity. We don't know who we are. And so there's a lot of questions we ask ourselves. Who am I? If I ever have, if we ever ask ourselves, who am I, or what am, who am I, or what, what's my purpose, then I have issues of identity. I don't know where I'm seated. And so if it's, if I'm seated with him, that means I'm beside him. I have all the advantage. I have all the blessings. I have dominion and power and authority that's over me. Why? Because he gave it to me. And so, and where do you belong? Many times we don't feel that we belong. We're, we're, we, we feel that we're just out of place, you know. And that's the issue of, a, of security, you know. Of, are you secure? Are you secure in his love? And so that's so important to know. And another thing is, what am I supposed to do? You know, the issues of significance. Many times there's, there's a big difference from success and significance. You need both. And, and significance is what you're going to leave behind, your legacy. And I think that one of the things that everything that we do, everything that we do in the Lord, you know, it's so important that we leave a legacy for our children. Our children are watching us. They're watching us when we read the Bible. They're watching us if we're, if we're, if we're praying. They're watching us. They're constantly watching our conversation. And that is so important to know, to leave that legacy, to know 
wow, you know, they really are looking for that will be the biggest testimony of our children and our grandchildren to say, yeah, you know, my grandma or my grandfather, they were seekers of truth, you know, and that's what we need to be seekers of truth. So position is so important. You know, we are seated with Christ and taking position and authority, which we can operate in our sonship, you know, and that's so important, the sonship, you know, because when we're not operating, we're not seated with Christ, then we're seated somewhere else. And that, and that seat is the deception, okay, which is the orphan heart, which is uh, we're not able to enter into worship, okay, which is illegitimacy. We talked a lot about illegitimacy months ago. If I don't walk in my position of authority, I can't take pos possession. So I need the priority in my life to seek him, to seek him, preparation, to know where I'm at, my aha moment, and my, and my uh, position of authority as a daughter or as a son is so important where you're seated in order to enter in what God wants to do. If we still are struggling with identity and where am I going and what am I supposed to do, I don't know who I am, and then we need to go through the three. We need to ask the Lord, Lord, what's my priority? What's first in my life? You know, second, what is the preparation that I need to do in order to come into that awareness, that aha moment of the Lord? And third is, of course, is our position. So if I'm not positioned, aligned with heaven, then where am I positioned? Because the only way that I can possess, I have to be positioned and occupy. See, the Lord says that he has given us authority and dominion. He has given it to us. But are we seated with that? Do we understand the power that comes with that? And sometimes we don't because doubt and fear, you know, that comes many times to visit us, right? And, and it should only be a visit and you should, you should say, leave. You get out. But many times we entertain those thoughts. We entertain the thought of fear of on the unknown. Where, where am I going to go? What am I supposed to do? And so those are, that, that tells us that our position is lacking. We don't know where we're seated. And God wants, to know, wants us to know that we are seated in heavenly places with him. And that's where we're going to get all the downloads and all the things that we need from heaven for our lives. So it's so important to know that he loves us. Now, many times we have rejected the image of God in our lives. So when I ask you, what do you see in the mirror? Do you like what you see? And, and if we don't like what we see, then we have a problem with identity. Because then we're rejecting uh, what God has created. See, God is perfect. God has created us in his perfection. And when we reject that, then we're seated somewhere else. So that's why we need, we need to know who we are. And that is so important to know. That the three things in our lives that we need to do in this coming year, in the Jewish calendar year, is to have that time. And it starts tonight at sun, sun, sundown, right? Sundown, and it finishes, I believe, the 11th. Yeah, the 11th. And it's a time of reflection. It's a time of coming together with the Lord and asking him, what am I supposed to, where, am I, where are you taking me, Lord? It's just that aha moment of time of just coming to him and asking him. You know, show me that picture. Like I shared the last time, is like big screen, you know, huge screen, you know. It was the huge screen. I was like, oh, wow, okay, Lord. You know, you have to have that aha moment for change to come. Because change won't come unless we are being purposeful for change. We need to be intentional with change. We cannot just wish for it. We need to act on it. And the only way to act is doing things that we normally don't do. And to come out of that shell and to come out of that comfort, sometimes it's not easy. So I really believe that this is, this is the year of promotion, the year of creativity and repayment. What the enemy has stolen, the Lord is going to repay in restitution and restore those things that were taken away, whether it's your peace, whether it was honor, whether it was whatever it was, the Lord is bringing repayment, whether it's financial, whether it was family, relationship, the Lord is going to bring a repayment of those things. 
So one of the things that we need that we understand that growth is something that we we should desire. You know, we shouldn't hold back. Like it was saying, you know, spare not, you know, don't hold back. Don't hold back. Because there's a blessing that comes that he's gonna give you the nations. Okay. And so when we are a people that are holding back, we're holding back for our generations as well. They won't be able to uh, be able to enjoy the things that we're holding back. So we're supposed to be the ones that are, uh, you know, opening the way, trailing away, you know, plowing away for our children, and our grandchildren to enjoy, you know, or else they're going to have to be the ones fighting the things that we did not um, contend for. So one other thing is the lack of initiative, initiative brings a stunt to your growth. So what's initiative? Is making a decision to do something, you know, that you normally don't do and don't have to wait for somebody to tell you. It's going to the extra mile. And the, and the Bible tells us about going the extra mile. You know, if the, if you're, it says if your master tells you to do, the, to do this, do it twice. You know, I'm just doing it in my own version. But so when somebody asks you or you're, you're, you're doing something and you just do just that, then that's all you're going to get. But if you go the extra mile, then that's where growth comes. Because then something expands in you, your mindset. Your poverty mindset should be wealth. Amen? We should have the, the mind of wealth in every area in our life. So I think it's so important that we have to be purposeful towards change. And I believe that initiative is the roadmap to growth. You ever see a roadmap and you're like in the road, and we're like, where am I supposed to go? Go to the extra mile to make changes in your life, to make the shift in your life. Because I, I believe that we all desire change. We all want change in our lives. But it's up to us, it's up to us, you know, to make that step, to make that step. You know, we talk, sometimes take a step, but now we need to step it up. You know, because we make little steps, but then we're safe. We like to be safe. We like to make, you know, safe things. This is good. This is all I want to do. But the Lord wants us to step it up. You know, it's like um, one of these uh, contests that they're, they're singing or it's a singing contest or whatever it is. And the judges say, well, now you need to step it up. It's good, but you need to step it up. In other words, if you really want to win, if you really want to win this prize, the next time you sing, you're going to have to step it up. And so there's got to be change. So it's a constant thing that we need to do and apply in our lives is that change has to come. It only comes when we make the decision. We make that decision to, to change. So I think one of the things is that we need to understand the importance of hearing God's voice. And if we have a hard time hearing his voice, if we have a hard time listening and hearing and, and being quiet, it's, it, I believe it's such a must that we hear his voice. I think I only heard once in my lifetime till now, once his audible voice. And it was something that shook me. And after that, I never heard again. And I was like, oh. But you know, but I, I have, there's other ways that God speaks. It's not just the audible. He speaks, us, speaks through his word. He speaks us through uh, impressions. And so those things that we need to cultivate in our lives. And um, so one of the things I, I was meditating is that many times we rely a lot on the prophetic word. You know, we're, we're wanting people to give me a word, give me a word. I mean, a lot of people come up to, can you give me a word? And it's like, what did you do with the last one? You know? And so we're constantly driving. So if we're having a hard time hearing his voice, and then that's where we need to come into the three Ps. <laughs> right? We need to come into uh, the pre priority, preparation, and position. Because as a daughter, I have to. It's something that is part of me and my growth in the Lord. I have to hear his voice. I need to know what I'm hearing and the oppressions that I have, that I know it's the Lord speaking to me. And so I think that we need to not only prophetic words are good, they're awesome. We need the body. We need the gifts. We need all those things that God wants to speak to us. But also your alone time with the Lord is so important to hear. It's so important. That's why you need to know where you're seated. Because if you're seated in the wrong place, there's something's blocking for you to experience that fullness, you know, of hearing his voice. So I think it's so important. And intimacy is key 
you know, it's, it's key for everything that we do is having that alone time with him and that quiet time. And many times in your prayer time, you just need to be quiet and just allow him to speak and just allow him to just speak to you. And I'm telling you, when there's that quietness in your soul, he comes and speaks to you. He comes and speaks to you on anything that he knows that you need to change in your life. We all need change in our life. We all need things in our life to change. But it's up to us. It's up to us to uproot any system or any patterns that are in our lives that are constantly repeating and repeating. We need to come and uproot that. And we have the authority to do that because it's his name. There's power. Amen. There's power in his name. And so we need to uproot any repetitive cycles that we are constantly reaping and probably seeing it in our kids as well or, or our grandchildren. We have the authority to say, it stops here. I'm done. You know? And when you say, I'm done, then something changes. You know? And um, I remember my, my son David, the one that plays the guitar when he was about eight years old, 10, because it's all about taking authority. Okay? When you take authority and you're in that position of authority and you know you're seated with him, you have authority. Amen? And so I remember David was taking a puffer for, he didn't have um, asthma, but he had issues of breathing sometimes when he would get a cold or anything really bad and he would really, really get stuffy and stuff. And he had to take this puffer and I, and he, poor, when he was, he was crying most of the time because it was awful. The, the flavor was just horrible and it was just disgusting. And I just, when I just gave it to Melissa, I said, I'm done. You're healed in the name of Jesus, and I'm throwing this $100 puffer in the garbage because that's how much it cost me every time I had to buy that. It's done, you know? And ever since I did that, never again. Never again that came into his life. And to this day, he's totally healed, okay? So when we take authority, if I'm seated and I'm seated, seated with Christ and I am in that position, then I can take possession, if I'm not in that position, I won't be able to take possession. And he needs to possess our hearts. You cannot be only half-hearted in the Lord. We need to be 100%. We need to come to the point where we say, you're everything. We say it with our mouth. We say it with our mind. But we're, our hearts is very far away many times. And so we need to have 100% and say, I'm sold out for him. You know, because lukewarmness or either you're hot or you're cold because lukewarmness is a sign you're seated somewhere else. Okay? And so he wants us to be hot for him because otherwise he says, I will vomit you. And that is strong, isn't it? That's a strong language there. But it's something to wake us up. We need to wake up. We cannot be just living life the way it is. There's more. There is the God of the more. Amen? And there's that greatness that's in you. He is great, and he's in you, and he wants to demonstrate that to every, wherever we go. So wherever we're doing, we need to be seated in that position, in sonship, knowing, knowing that whatever I do, I can take authority. And people will be drawn to that. They will see that in you. They'll see that confidence, you know. And that confidence only he can give you. But that's with, again, going back to the three, the priority, preparation, you know, and then we have our position. What is your position? So that's the question to you for you today. What is your position? Are you in the right position? Are you located in the right place? You know, are you in that location where you know that you're aligned with heaven and you will be able to draw from that? You know, now I was just talking with my husband and we were just talking about how our soul can really take over our spirit. You know, and if our soul is, is hurting, uh, we walk more soulishly than really in the spirit. And that's why we're constantly getting ourselves in trouble because the Lord says, don't walk, in the, don't walk in the flesh, but walk in the spirit. And sometimes we tend to exercise more in our soul. And so that's where we need to really identify what is controlling me. You know, is it my soul controlling me? Or is it the spirit? And so we need, to, there's, it's a battle, right? We're in a battle. Our flesh says, no, I want to go do this. And our spirit says, no. So we need to edify our spirit. And we need to really come into that position. If anything you get today, remember this. 
If you don't, if you're not in position, you won't be able to possess. You won't be able to possess the things that God wants you in your life. We're constantly battling. We're constantly striving. We're constantly trying to do things. You know, it's just like Friday. Um, Marisol was talking about how many times we're working hard, doing a lot of things. You were talking about ansioso, and that word translating ansioso is working hard at something, but you're not being fruitful. You're not being fruitful. You're doing a lot of good things, but it's not being fruitful. And so sometimes we can be caught up in that that is not fruitful because we're walking in what we want to do and not what he wants you to do. And so that's where, again, we need to position ourselves, align ourselves, and ask the Lord, what are the things that are taking, you know, energy from me? Because there's things in our lives that can be taking a lot of energy out of your life. And the bombardment of our mind is a constant. Our battlefield on our mind is a constant thing where we need to constantly um, uproot those things that are hurting us and they're planting and reproducing, planting and reproducing. And so one of the things we need to understand that what defiles man is not what comes in, it says the word, it's what comes out. Okay, so our confession, what are we saying? What are we speaking? Those are the things you're creating. Your words, you create. And when you create something, whether it's negative or positive, that's what you're going to get. That's the results. So I think that we need to understand that positioning ourselves with heaven, aligning our lives, walking in the spirit, and learning each day, hearing his voice, hearing what he wants us to do, that is the key for us to enter in into the new. Amen? Amen. Well, I just let's go stand up and let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're here in this place, Father. We bless those who are watching, Father. We bless, Father, that uh, this word will go all over the world, Father, and in every heart, Father. I ask you, Father, that um, you bring revival, Father, in our hearts, Father. And, Father, that we can come knowing, Father, what is the priority? What is the preparation? What is the position, Father, that you have for us, Father? And we know that every plan that you have for us is good, Father. So we bless those who are watching. I bless you. I thank you. I thank them for, for them watching uh, faithfully, Father, that you will show them that aha moment in their lives, Father, that they will know what areas they need to change, what areas do they need to align themselves into God, Father. We bless them in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, Father, I just bless every person here, Father.